A little more than a week ago, Lois Lerner was in front of our oversight subcommittee. She serves as the director of the exempt organization division, and she has been directly involved in this matter. Yet she failed to disclose what she knew to this committee, choosing instead to do so at an ABA conference two days later. This is wholly unacceptable, and one of the reasons that we believe, and as I stated several days ago, Ms. Lerner should be relieved of her duties. Chair Our audit was initiated based on concerns expressed by members of Congress because of taxpayer allegations that they were subject to unfair treatment by the IRS. Our report issued earlier this week addresses three allegations. First, that the IRS targeted specific groups applying for tax-exempt status. Second, that they delayed the processing of these groups' applications. And third, that the IRS requested unnecessary information from groups it subjected to special scrutiny. All three allegations were substantiated. I guess I would just have one last question, Mr. Miller. When asked the truth, um, and you know the truth, and you have a legal responsibility to inform others of the truth, but you don't share that truth, what is that called? Um, I always answer questions truthfully, Mr. Camp. If they contain terms such as Tea Party, We the People, Patriots, and so forth, uh, many of the terms that Chairman Camp referenced, and, and knowing these practices, knowing that uh, you sent letters to Congress acknowledging our investigation of these allegations, but consistently omitted that such discriminatory practices uh, that are alleged were actually, in fact, taking place. Why, why did you mislead Congress and the American people on this? Mr. Chairman, I did not mislead Congress nor the American people. I answered the questions as they were asked. Why didn't right. you tell us about the terms? Time has expired. Uh, there's absolutely no targeting. This is the kind of back and forth that happens when people apply for uh, 501c4. This was in March, March 22nd of 2012. Knowing what you know now, was Commissioner Shulman's response truthful? Um, it was uh, incorrect but whether it was untruthful or not. Look, when you talk about targeting, and, and, and we should really get into this, Dr. Bustani, because when you talk about targeting, um, it's a pejorative term. What, what happened here was, uh, and I'm not defending the list, but what happened here, and I would like to go through the application process, what happened here is that someone saw some Tea Party cases come through. They were acknowledging that they were gonna be engaged in politics. This was the time frame in 2010 when Citizens United was out. There was a lot of discussion in the system about the use of C4s. People in Cincinnati decided, let's start grouping these cases. Let's centralize these cases. The way they centralized it, troublesome. The concept of centralization, not. And it's not, we're not targeting these people in that, in that sense. Now the founder, a small businesswoman, originally filed for tax exempt status in July of 2010. Fully 20 months later, in February 2012, she received a letter from the IRS with numerous follow-up questions, a lot of them intrusive, but she answered every one of them and re returned it well within the two-week time window. Now almost three years to the day that she first filed, her application is still pending. But let's look at what happened to her in the three years since she applied. Beginning in December 2010, she was visited by the FBI Domestic Terrorism Unit. Her personal returns and her business returns were both audited by the IRS. She received four FBI inquiries. In her business, received unsolicited audits, unscheduled audits by OSHA, the Commission on Environmental Quality, and the ATF twice. Now, this is a citizen and a small businesswoman who had never been audited by the IRS or any of these agencies until she applied to you for tax-exempt status for her Tea Party. You know, the broader question here, is this still America? Is this government so drunk on power that it would turn its full force, its full might, 
to harass and intimidate and threaten uh, an average American who only wants uh, her voice and their voices heard? Mr. Miller, who in the IRS is responsible for targeting conservative organizations? So let me first say I cannot uh, speak to a given case. And that we've talked about 6103, but that's... Uh, this is not just one case. You know we're talking about the whole list the Inspector General put up there. Correct. Who is responsible for targeting these groups? So again, I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take um, um, exception to the concept of targeting because it's a loaded term. The listing was done by This was not a listing. You created a beyond the lookout list. Yeah. That's not a centralized government mandated or directed listing. You had a be on the lookout list that you acknowledge. You have the cases the inspector general already verified. So the question remains, who is responsible for targeting these conservative organizations? So again, and I think if you look at the TIGDA report, it answers your question. There are Oops. no names in the inspector general's report. So I'm asking you, not only as the acting commissioner, but as the deputy commissioner over this organization, who is responsible for targeting these, these individuals? So I don't, I don't have names for you, Mr. Brady, and, and I'm willing to try to find that out. You knew of our concern of this targeting. You knew of the allegations that had been reported to this committee. We brought you here to talk about it. You had received a briefing that this targeting was taking place, but you did not divulge that to this committee when we were asking questions about this. You said in your answer that you were aware some 200 501c4 applications fell into this quote category. We did these groupings together to ensure consistency, to ensure quality. We continue to work those cases. You didn't mention targeting based on ideology. You didn't mention targeting based on um, buzzwords like Tea Party or Patriots or 912. You knew that, but you didn't mention this to the committee. Do you not think that that's a very incomplete answer? I answered the question truthfully. That Who was responsible. I don't have that name, sir. I tell well, you, why don't you have that? I that I was originally. Have called. you asked anybody? Yes, I asked. Who, in who did you ask? I asked. I don't have that name either. I'll be glad to provide those names. Let, let him answer the question, Mr. Uh, Levin. It's my time. Washington State's time. Who did you ask? I asked the senior technical advisor. And, and what's the Nancy. senior technical technical advisor's name? Nancy Marks. And what did Nancy tell you? Who's responsible? I, that I don't remember, to be honest with you. You don't remember again. Uh, all right. Time has expired. The committee will.